Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this session, myself Chandrika Naik from the Department of Biochemistry at Manipal Academy of Higher Education. The topic for this session shall be Catabolism of Heme. It is a very clinically relevant topic because the end product that you get from heme catabolism if it accumulates in the blood or in the body can cause severe consequences. Now, which compound am I referring to? The chief product that you get on heme catabolism is bilirubin. Bilirubin is a simple yellow pigment, but when accumulates in the blood and tissues can cause a condition called as jaundice. And with jaundice comes several complications. So, let us try to unravel everything about catabolism of heme before you prepare yourself to enter into the study of jaundice. Let us define the learning goals as usual. We have to be very clear about what the learning objectives are before we embark upon any topic. So, what shall we learn for catabolism of heme? Let us first give an introduction to erythrocyte metabolism. We need to know where heme comes from. The major source of heme is hemoglobin and where do you find hemoglobin? This red color protein is found in the RBC. So, let us give an introduction to erythrocyte metabolism first and then we shall proceed next to the general structure and the function of hemoglobin because unless we know what is hemoglobin, what does it do? It is irrelevant to talk about catabolism of heme. For proceeding further, we shall study the structure of heme. You might be wondering why are we going so deep into the structure of hemoglobin? Because it is this component called heme found in the hemoglobin responsible for the formation of bilirubin which causes jaundice. And then we need to know the sources of heme. At the beginning, I told you heme. The major source is hemoglobin, but there are minor sources too in the body. It is not just hemoglobin, we need to know the other sources of heme. And finally, we come to the important topic of today's session, the catabolism of heme. Let us study it biochemically in the form of reactions and then see how bilirubin is exactly formed in the body. So, let us begin with the journey of understanding erythrocyte. Erythrocyte or red blood cell, you can see in the slide here. Now, this is red because it contains a protein which imparts red color. This protein hidden in the RBC is none other than hemoglobin. And erythro and that is why the name erythro means red and a cyte means cell. That is why erythrocyte simply means a red blood cell and that is why we keep saying it as a synonym as RBC as a short form. So, whether it is erythrocyte or RBC with this nomenclature we should now move forward to understand what happens in the lifespan of an RBC. Mature RBCs, I use this phrase mature RBC because RBCs are produced in the bone marrow of a person. From there, from the blast stage, they convert themselves into mature RBC and then they come into the circulation. So, what is happening in the mature RBC? Mature RBC contains hemoglobin and what is the function of hemoglobin? It is to transport oxygen from the lungs to the tissues or tissues to the lungs. So, it is the chief carrier of oxygen and also carbon dioxide. Remember, 
RBC is always flooded with oxygen. It's transporting oxygen. So, it's always carrying oxygen. But the very important fact which need to be emphasized is it never uses oxygen. It emits oxygen, never uses oxygen. And the most important fact, this RBC lacks mitochondria. When we say a cell does not have mitochondria, it is the powerhouse of the cell. So, RBC does not have the powerhouse of the cell. And so, how does RBC get energy to live or survive? It is through anaerobic mode. And we need to know little bit about the metabolism too. So, because it does not contain a mitochondria, it is deprived of energy it is always flooded with oxygen. So, there is a threat of reactive oxygen species being generated. All these points add on and make the lifespan of RBC short. So, how long does RBC live? It lives only for 120 days and after that it is hemolyzed. So, let us speak something about the life of an RBC. I told you it has to survive, it has to do the important function of carrying our respiratory gases, oxygen or carbon dioxide. So, it has to keep carrying these respiratory gases. So, if it has to do all this, it contains hemoglobin, it needs energy too. So, let us see who feeds the RBC. Yes, it is not the aerobic metabolism, it is the anaerobic metabolism, anaerobic glycolysis gives energy to RBC. So, the RBC picks up glucose, uses it through anaerobic glycolysis and derives its energy. One point needs to be remembered here that is since it is anaerobic mode, the amount of energy that it gets per glucose molecule is definitely less. We know that anaerobic glycolysis yields much, much less energy than what it would have got through aerobic glycolysis. But still, RBC survives in this anaerobic mode. I just told you that RBC is flooded with oxygen. Now, when we say oxygen and oxygen metabolism, this generation of some important dangerous compounds. Oxygen in its normal course of metabolism can generate some dangerous molecules and that is reactive oxygen species. Now, these species are dangerous species which can destroy the RBCs. So, how does RBC protect itself? That brings us to the next point as you can see on the slide. It is the HMP shunt pathway. HMP shunt pathway produces an important derivative. It produces what is called as NADPH and why do we need NADPH? This NADPH can attack the ROS and nullify its effect or rather detoxifies ROS. So, HMP shunt pathway is also an important pathway in RBC. So, how does RB, RBC survive? With the help of anaerobic glycolysis and with the help of HMP shunt pathway to uh, detoxify the reactive oxygen species. Then we say that lifespan is limited. Some cells like the nerve cells right from birth from fetus till death it never dies. There are cells which are permanent in our body, but RBC is not so. It lives only for 120 days. That means there is a threat to RBC. Something is destroying RBC. What is that? The first important fact is RBC has no nucleus. So, it cannot keep producing fresh proteins or fresh compounds. There is no genes in RBCs. So, it cannot uh, produce proteins as and when it requires. Second point no powerhouse, no mitochondria in the RBC, no ATP, no TCA cycle, no lots of energy. And the third and the most important point, it is flooded with oxygen. I told you it will produce lots of ROS and lots of ROS will damage the erythrocyte membrane and therefore, what happens is it is susceptible to damage. 
and therefore the lifespan of RBC is limited just to 120 days. Let us focus now on catabolism of heme. So, let us make a beginning with the heme carrier. Who is the chief hemoprotein in the body? It is hemoglobin. There are many hemoproteins. I told you we need to know the sources of other hemoproteins, but our focus mainly will be on hemoglobin because about 85 percent of the heme that catabolizes every day in us is from hemoglobin. So, what is hemoglobin? Hemoglobin is a protein in the RBC that imparts color and that is why we call it red blood cell because of hemoglobin and it is a conjugate protein that means it is a protein conjugated to a non-protein group and what is that non-protein group? That is heme and it is a chromoprotein. Heme is a colored compound. It transports oxygen. Let us go a little bit detail into hemoglobin structure. Hemoglobin right from the time of conception to an adult, we have different hemoglobins in our body. There is embryonic hemoglobin, there is fetal hemoglobin and then when we are born, that is when we have the adult hemoglobin. So, our focus today will be only on the adult hemoglobin that we have once we are born. It is HbA. What is HbA made up of? You can see a picture of uh, hemoglobin here on the slide. You can clearly make out it is a tetrameric protein. What do you mean by tetrameric? Can you see the four globules there? It is actually the four chains of hemoglobin. So, hemoglobin is made up of four polypeptide chains. It exhibits quaternary structure because there are four chains and they are interacting with each other. So, its highest order is quaternary structure. So, there are two alpha chains and two beta chains. Look at the picture, you can see the alpha chains in one color, the beta chains in the other color. And alpha chain is about 141 amino acids, whereas beta chain slightly more amino acids, 146 amino acids. So, that is the hemoglobin. Let us focus or zoom into the structure of hemoglobin. So, if you see here, this is globin number 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, there are four globin chains. So, we have discussed about the globin part that is two alpha chains, two beta chains that makes the globin. Now, look at the structure. If you look at the structure in detail, can you see some green colored ring hidden there? The fluorescent green color ring hidden inside the globin. Now, that is our heme. So, our focus will be on this heme and how we degrade it. So, we have four hemes in the hemoglobin molecule. So, what is the heme? Let us just study the ring structure before we study about its catabolism. The heme ring contains four pyrrole rings. So, pyrrole ring number 1, 2, 3 and 4. Focus on the slide, there are four pyrrole rings. And when these four pyrrole rings are joined, you get a porphyrin ring. So, let us join the pyrrole rings. So, you can see here methanyl bridge number 1, bridge number 2, 3 and 4. So, the four methanyl bridges join. Now, the porphyrin is ready. Let us name these rings, ring A, B, C and D. Now, there are four rings. Now, that is the porphyrin that we have. It is a tetrapyrrole ring. Now, if you look at this, each ring has a methyl group. Also, it has another group. So, if you see here, A, B and uh, a and B rings have vinyl groups in addition to methyl, whereas if you look at ring C, ring D, you can see it is not vinyl there, it is methyl and propionyl groups. Now, look at the symmetry of this uh, porphyrin ring. If you see ring A, ring B, ring C, look at how the substituent groups are arranged. I will read it out for you, M, V, M, V and M, P, methyl comes first. But look at ring number D, D it is not M P, it is P M. There is asymmetry in ring D. That means it is a ninth isomer. And what is the name of this isomer? It is called protoporphyrin 9. 
So, the heme that we have in our body whether it is hemoglobin or whether it is other hemoproteins we contain protoporphyrin 9 isomer. So, that is about the heme structure. You might be wondering as to why should I know so much about the structure? That is because you have to know it for heme synthesis and heme degradation and from this red color compound we are going to produce what is called the yellow color pigment bilirubin that causes jaundice. At the center of the ring I have I want you to focus there is iron and this iron is actually responsible for absorption of light and imparting the red color. So, iron is found at the center of protoporphyrin 9 and that makes heme ready. So, what are the heme sources? From the beginning I have focused only on one heme protein because that is the major hemoprotein hemoglobin, but there are many other sources for heme. So, what are they? Hemoglobin in the RBCs of course understood. What is the color of the muscle? Is it white? No, majority of the muscles in our body is also red. So, what imparts red color to the muscle? It is the myoglobin. So, there is heme in the myoglobin of the muscles too. So, we found two hemoproteins now. Let us move on to the third hemoprotein. We have cytochromes in the liver liver is an important place where we detoxify all the toxins, drugs and we need cytochromes for that. So, what are cytochromes made up of? They are also hemoproteins. Let us look at some minor other sources. We have cytochromes in the electron transport chain. So, you can imagine how important heme is. Without heme, no ETC, no energy for us. We have catalases, tryptophan pyrolases and some more. If you add some more heme proteins. So, these were the sources of hemoproteins, but always remember 85 percent of the heme that undergoes catabolism is from hemoglobin heme. Heme synthesis, it is such an important molecule. We are going to learn today about heme catabolism, but you need to know about heme synthesis. The heme synthesis takes place in liver if you have to produce cytochromes and other enzymes, but it takes place in the bone marrow if it is for RBCs. So, which are the two important sites where we produce heme throughout? It is the liver and it is the bone marrow. Bone marrow it is only for RBC hemoglobin. So, what happens to the senile RBCs? I told you it lives only for 120 days, a very short lifespan. Now, who will pick up this? The old RBCs. After few days of 120 days, it should be identified by somebody, should be picked and should be broken down. Who does that? We have a perfect system in place and that is called MPS, that is mononuclear phagocyte system. So, we have this system in the spleen or the liver which will pick up the senile RBCs and break them down or make them undergo hemolysis. So, it chiefly happens in the liver and the spleen. 85 percent of the heme for degradation I told you is from RBC and then remaining other sources or other hemoproteins will fetch heme for catabolism. So, let us focus now on the senile RBCs. I told you the senile RBCs they have a fragile membrane, they will be moving through the blood capillaries when they reach the spleen or the liver and when they squeeze out through the sinusoids they are very fragile. So, they will just rupture there and spleen and the liver have a system called as reticuloendothelial system. Now, there will be macrophages which will immediately engulf this hemoglobin once RBCs break down and so hemoglobin is captured or eaten up by the macrophages. So, the cell shown here on the slide is actually the macrophage which will engulf the hemoglobin. What will it do? Hemoglobin will be immediately broken down to two things, the conjugate part heme or the non-protein part heme and the other part which is globin. Globin of course, there are many amino acids in it we do not throw it off, we will actually make it undergo proteolysis and we will get lots of amino acids and heme will undergo degradation. So, today's focus should be on heme degradation. So, sources of heme 
85 percent hemoglobin, other 15 percent myoglobin, cytochromes, catalases, tryptophan pyrrolase. So, let us focus on the catabolism of heme. To understand the catabolism of heme, let us draw one such macrophage where the things will be happening to metabolize or rather catabolize the heme. So, we have the macrophage here. Heme is a red color compound. It is going to be degraded now. We are focusing on catabolism of heme. We are going to break down this ring system. I just spoke about the heme ring, the perfect tetrapyrrole ring, protoporphyrin 9. Now, that ring is going to open up and when it opens up, it first produces a green pigment and further produces a red orange pigment. So, we get first heme, then we get biliverdin and then we get bilirubin. Bilirubin is the pigment which will be causing jaundice. You must have observed when we fall or when we have a hurt, there will be local bleeding and you have seen the change in the bruise color. Initially, it is red. That is because the blood capillaries just oozed out the RBCs, they broke and the hemoglobin came out. So, the wound looks red. But after some days, you will see the discoloration changing. It might change from green to yellow to orange or purplish. Those changes are due to the conversion of heme to bilirubin and bilirubin. So, the perfect example all of us are aware with. So, heme will be converted first to a green color pigment called bilirubin. Bilirubin will be then converted to the next important compound and that pigment is called bilirubin. So, which is the enzyme that acts in the conversion of heme to bilirubin? There is a very important enzyme called heme oxygenase. That means, it is doing oxygenation. That means, it will need oxygen. Why oxygen? Because it has to open the ring. The protoporphyrin 9 ring has to open into a open chain compound. So, it uses oxygen and along with that it will need hydrogen. So, it will use NADPH as the source of hydrogen. Please note when this is happening, heme releases iron. So, the iron comes out from the heme. This carbon monoxide released, this is the only reaction in the body where we produce this dangerous compound carbon monoxide. And then you have removed the hydrogens, so it is NADP plus. So, heme oxygenase actually does three oxygenation steps to open the ring and make it a straight chain compound called as bilirubin. Remember, bilirubin is a green color pigment. And then comes the next step. You have to convert it to bilirubin and the name of the enzyme is bilirubin reductase. And bilirubin reductase again uses hydrogens So, it uses hydrogen ions, the donor is NADPH and bilirubin is reduced to bilirubin. So, this is catabolism of heme, where heme is converted to bilirubin first and then to bilirubin. So, all this happens in the liver and the spleen and daily this keeps happening. Every day grams and grams of hemoglobin are broken down and we normally produce bilirubin. The problem arises only when we produce excess bilirubin. So, if the bilirubin levels in the blood say goes above 2 milligrams per deciliter, then clinically it is declared as jaundice. So, if you look at this picture, this yellow colored sclera indicating that there is ictrus or jaundice in this person. 
So, the bile pigments are the biliverdin and the bilirubin. So, I have shown you the green colored pigment and the yellow color pigment, the biliverdin and the bilirubin together are called the bile pigments and what are they? They are produced from catabolism of heme. So, let us quickly summarize. Hemoproteins are the source of heme. Who is the major hemoprotein? It is the RBC. 85 percent is from RBC. There are minor sources. Liver is one of them which contains lot of these minor sources like for example, you have the cytochromes, my catalases. Also in muscle, muscle also has myoglobin that is also a minor source. And then RBC metabolism, please remember it is anaerobic type it is not aerobic. So, less energy, no nucleus, no mitochondria and therefore, lifespan of RBC is short, it is just 120 days. RBC is always under threat of reactive oxygen species, ROS as we say. So, it is always susceptible to damage by ROS and that is why it tends to have a very short lifespan of 120 days. And remember, what do you get? After catabolism of heme, you get this yellow color pigment called bilirubin. We also call it as the bile pigment. And excess bilirubin is dangerous. It leads to a clinical condition called as ictrus or jaundice. So, uh, let us try to revise this what we have learned today. Let me see if you can recall. Do it for yourself. Which among the following is a major source of heme? There are many sources, which among them is major? I have four choices for you. You can just keep something in your mind as the right answer. Is it cytochromes, catalases, myoglobin or hemoglobin? Definitely the choice is hemoglobin. That is the major source. 85 percent is from hemoglobin. Second question, which among the following pathways provides energy to a mature RBC? Who is going to give energy? Remember, not the pathway in RBC, it is the energy provider in the RBC. Is it aerobic glycolysis, anaerobic glycolysis, TCA cycle or HMP shunt pathway? Answer is anaerobic glycolysis. I told you oxygen is always flooding in the RBC, but it never touches or uses the oxygen. It only transports oxygen. So, glycolysis is of anaerobic mode. Which among the following is the porphyrin ring present in heme? Do you remember the name of the heme ring? Is it uroporphyrin 3, coproporphyrin 3, coproporphyrin 9 or protoporphyrin 9? The answer is protoporphyrin 9. Last question, which among the following when rises in the blood cause jaundice? So, which pigment in the blood causes jaundice? Is it heme? Hemoglobin, biliverdin or bilirubin? It is the yellow color pigment bilirubin. And one last question, which of the following enzymes releases carbon monoxide as a byproduct? So, it is the only reaction in the body where carbon monoxide is released. No other reaction in the body releases this dangerous compound. Carbon monoxide is a very dangerous compound. It can lead to death also if we are poisoned with that. So, who releases this? Is it by catalase action, heme oxygenase, biliverdin reductase or tryptophan pyrrolase? The answer is heme oxygenase. The first step in the catabolism of heme, carbon monoxide is released. So, that is all I have for you. Thank you.